so it's everything we need for God, life and godliness through this knowledge, through that knowledge, he has given us his precious and magnificent promises so that through them, you may become partakers of the divine nature now that you have escaped the corruption in the world caused by evil desires. So if we read this backwards, there's evil desires in the world that has led to the corruption of the world, but we have escaped that through this knowledge, which would primarily focus on the gospel, which is his precious and magnificent promises. The gospel saved by grace alone, through faith alone, and Christ alone. Born again, he puts his Holy Spirit inside of us. This assurance of eternal life, changing us, transforming us, sanctifying us giving us a, a purpose and a calling, going through life with us. The calling is to become conformed into the image of Christ. It's to become more like him. So this is the pursuit of godliness. Some have twisted this idea that becoming a partaker of the divine nature is to actually become God, to become a little God. That's not what it's talking about. T to be fair, there's aspect of truth to that we are being sanctified by the holy spirit who is god living inside of us so there is an aspect of truth that we are becoming more spiritually like god as well but we never become god god is god he's always going to be god we always are the created being no matter how perfect we are even in the resurrection in our glorification when we are morally and spiritually as much like god as we'll ever be we are still nonetheless a created being who will worship and serve God forever. So he is always the object of our worship, regardless of how perfect and glorified we become. Partaking of the divine nature means we become morally like him, morally perfect. We take on the, the heart and the desire of God and what he cares about. You know, even in this same sentence, it says, you become partakers of the di divine nature now that you have escaped the corruption in the world caused by evil desires. So it wasn't Holy Spirit's making you like God. You're a new creation. You're so spiritual and great now. It's equating that the one is happening because you're not living in sin anymore. You're not living in in the world being corrupted by the evil desires that are still in the world. For that reason, make every effort to add to your faith virtue. Virtue is like your, your goodness, if you will, your moralness, if I can make up a word, <laughs> moral character. And to that, knowledge, knowledge about God, right understanding, and to knowledge, self-control, and to self-control, perseverance, and to perseverance, godliness and to godliness brotherly kindness and to brotherly kindness love so i don't know that i would read this list chronologically it might be interesting to reflect on that in your private time so maybe i focus on my faith first my faith is how i get saved and how i enter in. and then i grow in my knowledge as i grow in my knowledge that will help me have confidence in my right standing with god and being led by the holy spirit when that happens I'll have greater self-control. As I learn to grow in my ability to have self-control, which is also a fruit of the Spirit in Galatians chapter 5, 22 and 23, then that will help me have perseverance. I need to be better at self-control, not only to resist the sinful desires of the flesh and, and be led by the Spirit. The longer following the Lord in life, the more challenges and obstacles the enemy's going to throw at me, the world's going to throw at me. I need to persevere. It's one thing if I get saved and I only have to make it through the week and then Jesus Jesus takes me home. It's another thing if I got to live for 50 years still, right? And go through persecution and go through trials and stuff. So we need that perseverance. As we're going through perseverance, we want to grow in godliness. Each challenge and obstacle you go through in perseverance is an opportunity to ask, what would Jesus do in this situation? What's the Holy Spirit wanting me to do in this situation? How do I handle this in a way that changes my character and nature as I press into the Lord to help me deal with this situation? So that will add to your godliness and to that brotherly kindness as you are growing personally to become more like god in godliness you also want to ask so what can i do to help my brothers and sisters so that's why brotherly kindness comes after godliness sometimes at first we need to focus on ourselves first we need to focus on our own self-control our own knowledge our own perseverance but once you're in a healthy place once you've got the logs out of your own eye try to help others around you right it ain't it ain't just about you all the time. Now, sometimes you can't help others 
that much and if you still got all your own baggage so in the empire of christian roadmap talk about dump your garbage baggage first <laughs> and then continue to grow in the lord so that way you can bless others on mission in the world and and bear good fruit and all the rest and then brotherly kindness the deeper expression of that is love right it's not just where you're helping others but where you're sacrificially laying your life down for others when you care for them almost more than yourself when you're willing to to lay aside your own comfort desire and what you want, your own selfishness, and that's the highest expression. We see Jesus modeling that on the cross. Peter then says, For if you possess these qualities and continue to grow in them, they will keep you from being ineffective and unproductive in your knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. So again, he connects it to knowledge. Knowledge here is not just intellectual assent. It's not just intellectual understanding and agreement. It's knowledge that is experience-based. It's knowledge applied. That's why the knowledge will help you partake in the divine nature and that'll give you everything you need for life and godliness. It's not just knowing it. It's all of us at one point knew some Bible truth. We didn't apply it to our life though. So just knowing up here doesn't make a difference. It's when you apply it to your life, when you deeply believe in it, when you actually put faith into it and start living according to it. <laughs>